Fellow citizens, 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 citizens. The world is very different now. Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves, and welcome to the 83rd installment of Last Week Lolita News. At the top of the segment, AP's Toys Museum is sitting almost entirely in stock because this community is full of charlatans who can't appreciate the art of imprisoning your teddy bear in a glass dome. The yoke is removable, meaning you can copy paste that shit on everything from body line to the neighbor lady's dog if you can catch him before he pisses on your lawn. And should you be able to do so without losing losing a finger, you will have traumatized the little fracker to the extent necessary to ensure he pees consistently in a state of primal terror. We've gotten a bit off track, I know, but I like to think that if I carry out the previously stated while Miss Johnson's back is turned, I will ensure that her shih tzu lives up to his name. Back to the content you presumably came here for, the OP still doesn't have shuring, I don't even want to know what's supposed to be in those test tubes, which means this brand is apparently willing to meddle in unsanctioned science experiments but cannot wrap their mind around putting stretchy stuff in the back of a dress. There happens to be a matching tote bag to help you carry things to places you certainly won't be going until there's a vaccine for melty lung syndrome. And should you like to get some use out of your kawaii receptacle, might I suggest stuffing your feelings deep down inside and hauling the entire affair to the nearest bottle of 80 proof whiskey, vodka, or mouthwash for the desperate and soon to be minty fresh. Speaking of substance abuse, I recommend whatever the designers were having Having to release a dress that fits exactly one titty. It is aptly named the Astrology JSK, meaning your horoscope had better say something about losing a tata before you have half a chance of fitting that bodice. It is not clear at this time whether the fake boobs crowd can just let out a little volume with a bike pump, and we are standing by to find out in a comment section that I'm certain is to be one part confusion and one part serious discussion as to the ins and outs of silicone implants, side effects, and possibility of blowout. An instance that is particularly frightening given that, in my mind, boobs should not share traits with tires, and I'm pretty sure there's no roadside assistance for blown tits. Speaking of blowouts, Angelic Pretty Shibuya's anniversary fair managed to release enough frocks to have anyone listing them turn purple, the shade of their face would match a lot of their wares, and the special lavender colorways included Toys Museum, Astrology JSK, and Rabbit's Happy Flower Banquet with a head bow that, had it been introduced in the live journal community of 2010 would have had you beaten in the street with a lead-lined parasol. I'd say this community has strayed further and further from God, but I'm pretty sure most of you would sell your soul for cotton honey cake, and the only God you pray to is currently cornering the market on dresses I wouldn't put on my body if I was naked as a jaybird, cold as fuck, and dropped into the middle of the French Open. That's not to even mention this $2,000 dress, which is up for reservation until the 23rd and will be delivered in June 2021 for those who have an interest in wearing the mortgage payment equivalent of their poor life choices. Shibuya also has a limited re-release of British Bear, Brilliant Jewel, Unbirthday, Fantastic Dolly, Dream Marine, and a perfume based on Misty Sky, which I presume smells like basic bitch. Unfortunately, fragrances containing alcohol cannot be shipped internationally by your average individual. The American community is going to have to direct their funds elsewhere. Might I suggest blouses? God knows most of you would have to be held at knife point to get you to buy anything other than a JSK. Wardrobe builders are important, and so is our next release by the name of Kumia's Christmas Market, wherein Baby dunks on AP yet again in the holiday department. AP has yet to announce any kind of seasonally appropriate print in response, and my hopes are not particularly high at the moment, given that their last attempt could be politely described as someone made a snowman shaped like a butt plug, and somehow this made it from the design table to market without a single person saying, hey, that looks like like something the emotionally damaged shove up their hiney. This is a disturbing off-road for I Like Baby's Christmas Releases Better, and this one comes in two JSK cuts, matching jewelry, and a special online exclusive colorway. And I am entirely late to announcing this release because time ceased to mean anything to me the moment the world shut down, and I began debating whether or not I exist outside of my own mind. The bare-faced shoes are a nice distraction from that concept. They cost $160, and in the history of expenditures, 
answers that make sense, these would definitely be top of the list of things that should immediately prompt the intervention of a financial advisor. He should be a stern-looking man with a mustache. And he should tell you that you've been living on ramen for five weeks now. You do not need footwear with a tiny little face on it. Transitioning to another brand that's been taking Angelic Pretty out to the woodshed before beating it with a sack of hammers, Metamorphose My Dear Friends 2020 series comes in three sizes. These include regular, plus, and plus plus. And the best color by far is pink, meaning that color sold out in all sizes, meaning I was thwarted before I ever began. This series is set to arrive late this month or early December, a fact that puts it in a dead heat with their Magical Artifact series, which is shipping out early, some buyers having already received their Magical Cat frocks. This concludes the good news for the evening. And moving on to social news, Facebook group Ruffle Chat spawned a thread by the name of No Nuance November. It has gained roughly 1,000 comments as of writing. And you cannot pay me to sift through it in its entirety, so the contents could be summarized as OP asked people for their opinions on any aspect of the fashion. The net they cast was wide enough to rope in a megalodon. And sure enough, a not insignificant number of people used such a wide open topic to talk about new and amazing subjects like why can't Lolita's be lovelies, sissies really aren't that bad, and how come kinksters can't be allowed to lick the faces of anyone they desire. Was the last bit a slight exaggeration? Yes. Is it that far removed from what those insufferable degenerates would do if they felt for even a moment that it wouldn't result in a roundhouse kick to the cranial nerve? No, and sissies in particular will see any inch you give them and immediately take a mile. But regardless, it's always fun to watch women carry water for misogynists, especially those that find dressing and acting like a woman to be a humiliating experience through which they extract sexual gratification. Doesn't help that they can't dress themselves for shit, but hey, if you like to hang out with a cohort of uncomfortably damp pantyhose fetishists one rogue impulse away from humping you on the leg, who am I to stop you from fulfilling your heart's desire? Call me in five months when your inbox is a mixture of unsolicited dick pics and pleased to be dressed in your Lolita dresses so they can diddle their fiddle, and we can talk about how they played you for the world's dumbest violin. Your sanctimonious naivete can absolutely be exploited for predatory purposes. And considering these cis, often white men are absolutely not hurting for advantages in the societal arena, they often espouse conservative politics, and many simp incredibly hard for Trump, I'd say your impassioned defense of sexually deviant fascist sympathizers is not exactly in keeping with the hyper-woke moral stance you thought you were affecting. Bootlicking is for the bedroom girls and boys, and I didn't mention non-binary people on purpose because I think they've done enough mulling on gender to know that a cis man taking on the affect of hyper-femininity to fulfill a humiliation fetish doesn't make him a protected class. Side note, trans people are also tired of these fetishists invading trans communities. Remember that the next time you're going out of your way to white knight a right-wing satin defiler who would absolutely vote for a bathroom bill before beating off whilst dressed like a toilet roll cover but fucked a clown. Your mother didn't spend all that time passing down good genes for you to turn out this stupid. And speaking of women in their late 40s, that brings us to our next story for the evening, otherwise known as Pinterest temporarily banned the use of the word Lolita in searches. A fun little message telling you they would report you for diddling children appeared. And all of this was resolved rather quickly so that you could again search the words Lolita fashion, meaning that the exactly two people who used the blasted thing could go back to pinning or trusting or whatever the heavens they do on a website designed for women in their golden years that haven't biblically known anyone since the first Bush administration. Meaning we'll be moving on to our next story wherein an intrepid individual asked whether or not idol Lolita was actual Lolita, and this reporter took one look at the offerings and can answer with a resounding no. This looks cheaper than a dime store harlot, shorter than the attention span of your average Redditor, and made at least in part out of the same garbage bags in which its wearer should be stuffed, tied shut, and tossed onto the nearest barge. Which finally, finally, brings us to last week Lolita News next special segment, and an old favorite to distract you from the oncoming wave of COVID, Thanksgiving dinner, and a Christmas full of Hello Kitty gifts because your family cannot fathom that a noseless cat is not in the same category as Baroque-inspired fashion. And we return to that website, Everyone Loves to Hate, in a bit called Watifa Lace Market. The premise is simple. 
I shop here, find something that confuses, disturbs, or makes me question the whole of humanity, and you benefit from the dark marks it leaves on my soul. So without further ado, let's get this going. What to fuzz that? This looks like every retail associate that just heard Mariah Carey come onto the speakers. That is the unhinged smile of a person called to work at JC Penney's during the plague. And they appear to be equally empty inside, having come unpinned from reality sometime after hearing that there were people willing to risk life and lung in order to go to a mall. This little fuck already looks like he's ready to fling himself in front of a speeding Segway. Meanwhile, we've got five more weeks of Christmas and he's got the face of a man that was just assigned to work the food court, 10 people called called in sick, and he has just explained to the mother of six for the fifth time that Cluck Hut does not have fat-free chicken nuggies due to the unfortunate coincidence that the bird they're sourced from needed body fat to survive. They did try to tell Mr. Feathers to go on a diet, but he simply could not be convinced, and what with all the dying and being eaten he's since been involved in, it's simply become a lost cause. This is coincidentally also the face of a service associate whose manager was just called in after said employee did not bend over and lick the floor enough enough times to gain the customer's satisfaction. I give this poor thing exactly a day before they turn the food court into a fountain of blood or cry. And here's wishing everyone working in the service industry whatever will help them keep their seasonal sanity, as that's all the time we have for tonight. This has been Tyler, you've been watching Scarfing Scarves, and before you run off to ask a higher power why you didn't jackhammer the little red X in the corner until you were freed from this prison, I'd like to thank my patrons for being the stalwart support of whatever this was supposed to be. You lot are entirely responsible for the charade continuing despite mounting international pressure. And should you like to join their number and or metaphorically flip off the people you know it very well would piss off, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more things best kept separate from the sane, sensible, and capable of feeling remorse. Thanks again guys, and I'll catch you next time.